Maybe you don't know what it's like to be the most powerful or the most wanted. Maybe you don't know how it feels to fall in love or love yourself or how it feels to lose your world, flip your world, or run the world. There's a lot you may not know, but that's exactly what makes a story worth watching. Because in the end, you're just a story away. Welcome back to the 14 Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Detour. We are here at Digi Palace at the front lawn. This session is presented in partnership with Netflix. It's our pleasure to present today Evolving Narratives, the Digital Dreamscape. Vikram Chandra, Sudhir Mishra, Vikram Aditya Motwane, and Monica Shergill in conversation with Vani Tripathi Tikku. The digital landscape is perhaps the most exciting space for creative potential today having transformed long-established modes of consuming, interpreting, and interacting with text-based narratives. This is a golden age of entertainment, as streaming services constantly evolve, challenging view expectations, and bringing in new ways in which stories are created, absorbed, and shared. In a fascinating session, the panelists exchange ideas on the process of adapting dynamic scripts for the screen, reimagining the text for the visual medium, and of course, broadening the possibilities of immersive, authentic storytelling. Vikram Chandra is the author of Geek Sublime, Sacred Games, now a Netflix series, Love and Longing in Bombay, and Red Earth and Pouring Rain. He's also the co-founder of Granthika.co, a startup reinventing writing for the digital age. He teaches creative writing, at the University of California, Berkeley. Sudhir Mishra is an Indian film director and screenwriter known for directing critically acclaimed films including Hazaro Khwaishe Esi, Dharavi, and Chameli. Each of them are spectacular and have created film history. He was one of the pioneers of the alternative independent cinema movement in India in the 80s and remains one of the few directors from that era who continues to remain contemporary. Vikramaditya Motwane is an award-winning writer, director, and producer. His feature credits include Uran, Lutera, Trapped, and Bhavesh Joshi, Superhero. He's the creator and co-director of Sacred Grames, Netflix's first Indian original blockbuster series. He's also an ex-partner of the Phantom Films and has produced films like Queen, Ugly, NH10, Masan, and Urta Punjab. His latest film, is AK versus AK, a Netflix original, which is currently streaming. Monica Shergill is Vice President Content at Netflix India and oversees the development, creation, and licensing and acquisition of all Indian language context on Netflix, including films, series, reality shows, comedies, specials, and documentaries. Shergill joined Netflix in 2019. She and her team have entertained audiences in India and around the world with local stories such as Ludo, a film, AK vs. AK, film, uh, Ginny vs. Sunny, which is also a film, and Masaba Masaba, which is a series. Jamtara, Sabka Number Aega is a series, and of course, Fabulous Lives of Bollywood Wives, which is a reality series, and has licensed films across languages including Miss India in Telugu, Axon in Hindi, and Super Deluxe in Tamil. She is a seasoned media professional with over two decades of experience as a journalist, producer, and network executive. Vani Tripathi Tikku is the youngest ever member of the Central Board for Film Certification. Her campaigns and outreach programs have focused on encouraging women's participation in politics, as well as issues revolving around education, empowerment, and employment. Tikku was a part of the co committee for the International Film Festival of India, Goa. Please do remember to comment by typing it into the comment section below. Ladies and gentlemen, Evolving Narratives, the digital dreamscape, Vikram Chandra, Sudhir Mishra, Vikram Aditya Motwane, and Monica Shagil in conversation with Vani Tripathi Tikku. Vani, over to you. Hello, friends, and uh, uh, it's amazing that we are back at the Jeppo Literature Festival in 2021. Uh, only the big change is that we are not meeting in Jaipur this time, and 
we are speaking to each other from virtual spaces from across the world. Um, I'm very happy to join in, join in by uh, Mr. Vikram Chandra, uh, who's in New York right now, Vikram Aditya Motwani, Sudhir Mishra, and Monica Shergil from Mumbai. Uh, within the uh, context of creating content and we meeting digitally at the Jaipur Literature Festival, uh, it's interesting to note that what, is, what has been dystopian for the rest of the world as far as uh, uh, the COVID times is concerned has been an ecstatic reality as far as creating content, stories, and storytelling narratives on OTT platforms. And that's exactly what we are here to speak about today. Also look at how the storytelling narratives have changed around us within the last 11 months, and the advent of OTT itself, how it has created absolutely new narratives for telling stories, whether it is film or it's web series. So let me start uh, with um, Mr. Vikram Chandra, the author of the celebrated series on Netflix, uh, already complete with two seasons called Sacred Game. Mr. Chandra, uh, to begin with, this book is almost a decade old. And uh, I remember from those days, I used to be in Mumbai and uh, was an actor uh, working in the film industry. And I remember when the book came, there was a lot of conversation around what the book was about, whether it was the protagonist, Guy Tonde, who we see in the series, brilliantly portrayed by Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Uh, the binaries of the system, uh, you know, what we see as the, not just the cop and the robber story, but the entwinement of uh, the narratives where a cop takes it upon himself uh, to, you know, uh, chase this uh, guy from the lower depth who we see as Guy Tonde. From the book, now a decade later, to a celebrated web series, how has this journey been for you? And how did, did you ever envisage that this will finally turn into a web series which more than probably 120 countries in the world will be watching? Mm, I, I Thank you. Uh, I should say first that I didn't write the series. <laughs> that was the team of <laughs> Vikram and his very talented team of uh, writers in Bombay. Uh, so yeah, so I wrote the book. Um, uh, so when the book first came out uh, in 2005, uh, even before the book came out, there was interest in making it, doing something with it. Um, but at the time, um, HBO had started doing Sopranos and things, but there was no global streaming platforms. Um, so a couple of people wanted to make uh, feature films out of this, and I thought they were insane. I, I didn't understand how you know you could try and make, a two, even if it's a two and a half hour feature film out of this. So I uh, I said, but okay, you know, go ahead and try and do it if you want to. And they optioned the book, and of course it didn't work. So it took a long time, uh, I guess, for the book stayed in the world, but the the proper platform for the book to actually turn into something visual. Um, that took a long time to happen and to mature. And then Netflix did a great job. There's the whole question of language as well, right? Because I and all of us really wanted to do it in you know local languages and not do that kind of horrible thing where Indian characters are speaking in accented, you know, in bad, it doesn't work, right? To, to have them speaking another language. And then um, Netflix with Narcos and other uh, series showed that you could do this. Um, and then, so I think everything came together at the right time, at the right place. Uh, uh, Vikram and Phantom Films were, were uh, you know, thriving in Bombay and we met in the Netflix often in LA. Um, and then, you know, everything, like I was saying, came together and it was the right moment. Uh, so as often happens in, I think, all arts, but especially in film, you have to have a whole range of things lined up, right? Uh, in order to, for something to actually be produced and made and distributed. Um, and we were—I feel that we were very, very lucky that that um, that all of this happened for us. I didn't mean to say that you wrote the series. What I was trying to say was that there's a digital dreamscape which has opened up in the past couple of years. Uh, very much also content which is being created in countries like India, and uh, this digital dreamscape has absolutely changed the narrative of how we consume content around us. 
what i was trying to ask you was that as an author when your book turned into a audio visual reality on screen and obviously you must have seen it maybe much before any of us saw it what were the first uh, impressions or what was it what was in the book which was uh, as i say individualistic uh, way of looking at the written material you read a book you create a you know kind of a landscape in your mind and then when it becomes a reality where you see it very much large on the screen or maybe in your palm you know as a ott uh, streaming uh, you know content uh, how did it change for you as an author or was it true to the very essence of uh, when you were writing the book from that time i think it was very this the entire series is very true to the themes and the essence of the book but it necessarily had to go through radical changes in order to work on the screen right and i have to say that when these guys first sent me the draft of the pilot which was actually pretty late in the process i was like what the hell because <laughs> uh, you know the structure necessarily have to change the characters have to change but dhakka laga tha you know for like 10 minutes <laughs> but then as soon as i thought about it i started to see the logic of it right like you can't have in a in a cinematic way have a detective think for like 40 pages right which happens in the book right so you have to get the thing moving and so it was wonderful uh, it was also very surreal because i'd lived with these characters for decades and to see them you know three dimensionally not just in um on the screen but in life right the first time i visited a set uh, in bombay they were shooting that uh, uh, in the nightclub where cuckoo's dancing and gaitonde is looking at her and it was insane right <laughs> and what made it even more crazy is that when i was doing research for the book i had been to a kind of sleazy filmy party in that hotel in that <laughs> in, in that disco like like decades earlier with a friend right so it, it just felt like weird deja vu you know kind of experience in many many ways coming to the dhakka laga part uh, vikram uh... Uh, i'm talking to about and i i want to uh, talk to vikram vikram aditya i have we have two vikram uh, you know with us right now he is mr chandra uh, <laughs> 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 yes he is mr chandra so you saw the distinction i had to make in very much in the beginning uh vikram you know uh what sacred dreams has done is it's opened a plethora of uh, uh you know experiences as far as creating content which belongs to uh, the literature part you know contemporary or otherwise in the country and uh, when sacred games happened you know i remember i attended the premiere in mumbai you and kashyap were very much there um one question did arise even in my mind is that with the advent of the ott you're basically a cinema man but here you were uh, running the show for a web series is the author back I mean, there was a time in the uh, 60s, 70s, or the 80s in the uh, film industry where you had classics or the contemporary literature of the time being turned into cinematic realities, and then then there was a bit of a blip. There were good and bad films. I mean, that is uh, up to the audience choice how they received the films which were being made. And here, there was a book which was there, uh, uh, you know, as I say, since more than a decade. and that came into a reality for a absolutely new medium called the ott so you were working on it uh, i know you were intrinsically a part of also getting it written you and anurag were constantly working on you know making it happen also in terms of the series how did this happen was it is it is it is it that kind of a change that we are envisaging it will be or is it early days yet Uh, no i think it's uh, i definitely think and i mean this is in in in, in uh, it's, it's in the hand of the creators and in terms of the ott uh, 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 the networks but i do think uh, look from a creator perspective it's a lovely place to be right now where you don't have to you know you don't have to shoehorn your content into uh, you have to make a two hour movie with an interval point for everybody right the fact that you can now go and make a limited series you can make a longer series you can make a comedy series you can do hindi you can do english you can do multiple languages um you know you can make a feature film so i think that plethora that's available now to us creators is is amazing and that's the real deal i mean it's not like it's a it's not a pipe dream right so i think going back to you know when sacred games was happening i think 
as as mr chandra said one the most exciting thing for us was was the fact that it's local language um number one you're like great local language number two again not having to shoe horn the book into a two hour film and you know have this if that had happened you'd have to lose so many interesting characters you'd literally have to like you know kuku would be one scene and kartika would be two scenes and you know all those lovely characters that have become fan favorites that you relish uh the writing process of the relish you know the, the casting and the whole thing and you know just you know love love it's such great characters to chew on all that would have gone and i think the format allowed us to really really have so much fun with that and you're right the the it, it, it's it it was the moment for the authors um and for and i learned pretty early while directing it that you know it's not it's not so much about the director here i mean even though you are crucial in that sort of sense but it's more about the writers and then the actors you know your actors are have so much to chew on you know you're talking to i'm sitting and i'm realizing i'm team briefing self and then oh, this is in season episode 6 and you've come from episode 1 and this is you've done this and this and 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 and, and it was so wonderful i'm like wow for an actor it's so much to chew on so much interesting material uh, that you can sort of go back on so um i think it's it's a great time in that sense for everybody um and i think uh you know uh, i think the format in and it's not like it's not again because it's not a one size fits all i think your formats are flexible and therefore you can today choose the best format for your for the content that you want to tell um we had the best format for sacred games in the dramatic medium but it everything doesn't need to be that you know you can you can have uh, it's so flexible right now it's so cool right now to be able to do anything you want so uh, monica uh There are so many acquisitions that Netflix is doing, which also include books from other parts of the world. And I am uh, talking about books more than just content today. I do generally talk a lot about content, you know, whenever we all meet, you know, otherwise in other forums. It's because we are talking at the Jaipur Literature Festival, and literature and books is celebrated here, uh, you know, uh, year after year. So. i think it's celebration time for authors also all across the world that ott streaming services like yours is also creating a platform and opportunity for authors from so many uh, different parts of the world what do these acquisitions mean for you and do you also see more and more books from india more and more authors of indian origin you know getting space on your uh, slate soon Uh, actually first vani i should thank you for uh, making me meet mr chandra uh, <laughs> hi i was not hi. there when sacred games one was made and uh, uh, though uh, vikram and sudhir i mean we we work with them all the time but rarely does one get to meet mr chandra so thank you for that and uh, and also you know just to add to the conversation that uh, uh, both have previously mentioned uh, you know sacred games uh, two out of every three viewers of sacred games were actually from countries outside india so that's the uh, power of you know stories and books which are originating from one corner of the world and then can suddenly just blow up and travel across and uh, i feel that you know for streaming services to come and uh, you know really start looking at literature stories from every corner of the world is one of the most exciting things that's happening right now if i were to just give you an example of last year alone what happened and these are uh, series and films which we've seen release uh, you know on netflix bridgerton uh, you know the books had been around for 18 years and suddenly uh, the show has become a raging success and uh, the books are on the new york times best seller list white tiger you know which came out in 2008 uh, has been loved by people across the world uh, indian books i mean uh, sacred games of course uh, you know as we know has been such a big success but even if i look at last year sudhir has uh, uh, done a brilliant feature for us serious men last year which has uh, uh, worked for the audiences it's been critically acclaimed we did uh, when dimple met rishi which was which released as mismatched on the service a ya series which is actually based in uh, uh, california it's about indian americans in california but got adapted to 
kids in jaipur and uh, it's it's wonderful that we are talking at the jaipur literature festival and that book got adapted to uh, you know a guy and a girl uh, who come and meet uh, you know at some web innovation camp in jaipur so i think from a books perspective uh, at netflix we are so hungry and we are so excited uh, you know as the larger teams uh everybody is looking for a book if i tell you the environment inside everyone's scouting everyone's talking to people uh you know whether it's uh, people in the profession who can find us books publishers or agencies because i feel um you know the relationship which has been struck between the written word the authors and their stories and the ability like vikram rightly said you know of the streaming services to really do some innovative kind of telling and formats has actually been the most transforming thing of course books have always been adapted as films but there were so many books which couldn't have been adapted as films you know they were so complex and 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 also from a from the perspective we know about classics being adapted as films and people watching and going back to them again and again but there are so many amazing stories out there which are very very tough for people to even perhaps read i would actually like to say here that that uh sacred games the kind of uh, uh you know book it is the canvas that it has and and uh, you know how complex it is there would be more number of people who would not be able to read it than the ones who would actually be able to really read it and enjoy it and for those kind of stories to really find a larger audience and then want more so kind of virtuous cycle has been set you know the more books that are getting adapted uh you know to their screen uh, uh, versions the more they are traveling the more people are going back and actually reading and finding more about these books so i think it's a very very exciting time and we are certainly very hungry at netflix we are looking for a lot more indian books we are doing many but uh, we are always looking for more so keep the hunger going and sudhir uh, now to you uh, i remember two years ago at the jaipur book mart Uh, we were speaking about page to screen, uh, and you were a part of the roundtable that I was hosting. Um, and with Namita Gokhale, one of the festival directors, I've had this conversation again and again that more and more Indian writing needs to find its space uh, to, uh, you know, uh, the footsteps of for creating content. I mean, I call it creating content today because it's just not making films; it's making so many other things, you know, including docu features and web series. And here you were. You picked up Manu Joel's book, and I remember uh, at one of the JLS sessions when Manu was actually launching Serious Men right there. And one of the most sensitive films of our times. I wrote about it. I remember. I was so uh, engrossed, uh, uh, you know, looking at the film that I had totally forgotten that uh, you know, coming from more than three decades of filmmaking that you belong to, um, you have attempted, you know, looking at contemporary literature even before. but this one was special so tell us a little about this journey and uh, the fact that again manu's book very much like mr chandra's book was very much there in the public fora for a bit and then we saw this beautiful film that you made with nawaz and that little boy who's such a wonder you know in the film called serious man yeah it's it's a uh, dress of it's very scary i mean to turn a book because you know i'm i'm going to i mean i'm i'm a failed novelist so i mean i <laughs> you know, I, I started out wanting to write novels. Then it's too scary and too lonely, and you know, there's not none of that immediate affirmation that you get when you make a film and all that. So you know, I mean, a lot of people call my film novelistic. Also, we see Hazaro, and you know, the travels across the many characters. You know, so I mean, yeah, it's very scary, and and uh, you know, but there's this brilliant book, and we just had to take the essence of what what uh, Manu did and. and uh, i think i became a better filmmaker because of 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 the book and uh, and i had this wonderful collaborator in manu who was available uh, to talk and he was very excited in fact he was there through the shooting never once intruding always very exciting and wondering how this book is being so he was like exploring a medium along with us and uh, we had great fun doing it um, of course you have to concoct a lot the character changes i mean has to go through me so i mean you have to rewrite it on the screen so i mean it's less cruel the the film 
for instance the book is 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 very harsh uh, you know and uh, but that necessarily happens and, and 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 the author has to give it up you know because the book remains and one was very confident about his own book so that you know i mean it's you have to create those incidents you have to rewrite it almost you know for the screen and it has to work while keeping some of the ideas alive of course the film could not have existed without the book but you know it was wonderful to be able to do it with netflix and and create this another piece of work based on manu's and you know and it's not possible that kind of work is not possible if netflix hadn't existed and if ott has not had not existed because you have such freedom so i mean i i mean it's a scary time also because you know there are no excuses anymore you know you are only limited by your own you know own talent in a sense so i mean you know we had excuses before when we said oh we can't do this because you know of circumstances and yeah like vikram says there's there's opportunities to do anything you could have made for example serious men as as a series as a limited series but you could have made it because there were many ideas within within serious men which were left i mean the whole scientist story is left so we've concentrated more on ayan the nawaz character and the son and so it becomes like a father son story with and and the scientist comes in as much as required in this story but you could i mean somebody could take serious men again and 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 do the acharya story for instance and turn it into a limited series so i mean there's so many wonderful things that that can happen and i mean some i mean you could i mean even you could re- write there are ideas that you, we have like vikram says you could there's an idea you have makes a short film do that limited series do that you know longer series if it has legs make three seasons make four seasons if the story book okay, example i'm writing a period piece right these days which has legs you know i mean which could go into a so it's more like a novel right so i mean i'm being able to you know do things which i would have never been able to do to 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 tell the story of 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 for example a, a period in india you know which which goes across spans decades or you could take it from say the 1840s to 1947 you know if you could you know so i mean these things all open up you know i mean wonderful ways of seeing and and, and doing things and as long as you have a large enough niche and as long as you are communicating to Uh, 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 and you know i mean what is also wonderful is that it gets, gets discovered over time people will see serious men over say five years later someone will discover it it's there you know i mean it's that's also i mean so you can you know it's, it's a new generation so it's a what uh, like vikram says it's quite quite a good time you know i mean it's, it's scary and i don't like the word content too much actually <laughs> Uh, we, we, no, grew no, up, no, we, we grew no, up. We grew up in content for film school and all that, you know. So it's like I'm a content. I, I thought I was a filmmaker and a film director. We took ourselves <laughs> rather seriously, too seriously, some of us at at one point. So if you tell some of my friends you are a creator, I mean, they might, you know, money call might have turned in. But you know, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 wonderful. You 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 do you fulfill various functions also, and and, and uh, writing. Uh, has always been i mean it's been giving us due you know but you know it all begins there you know and i'm so glad that uh, writers are finally getting their you know place in the sun you know i mean and uh, in, in in you know i mean which doesn't mean that directors i mean there's another you know contrary thing you know if, if it's all a di- writers medium then why do you need a director right so i think the director is a, is a kind of a rewriter and if you see great series for instance the guy who made narcos you know if you see fincher and if you see uh, you know house of cards you see you, you see a kind of wonderful collaboration i you see breaking bad and you see the wonderful i mean it's not possible without that visual look the the heat of the albuquerque the, the you know you you see and you feel you know so i think i mean uh, you know with 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 the technology that netflix for instance works with you know it's it's what it's amazing what what a dop can do i mean you you could what, what, what i mean what you could do with sound you know you can tell stories around that so i mean i think it's 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 like you say it's in its nascent stage but i think it's just going to evolve from here and i you don't know what 20 years later what this experience will be and so talking of the evolution uh, mr chandra 
one of the things uh, most of my filmmakers uh, most of my friends who are filmmakers say that you know they want to approach more and more authors but there is this word that uh, sudhir used it's scary i mean uh, obviously you're not one of the scary ones and that's why you know there has been such an amazing but, uh, i mean i mean, I mean it's, scary. it's scary it's scary because it's scary because you know the book has a reputation it's scary yeah, because so, you, so, you, so, you, so, you let me just let me let me just yeah. start mr chandra that Mr. Chandra, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, I wouldn't call it resistance, but there is this something that exists in the mind of people who are creating stories for screen. Uh, I'm not using the word content to be. You've corrected me there, but you've had you and I have used the word before. All of the possible. Uh, but but but, but uh, Mr. Chandra, how much of a collaboration is it in terms of? looking at a book and then somebody else is writing a screenplay is it is it that shared collaboration which exists or it's early days yet because i always feel this is democratization of content a lot of books are now being democratized because now they can reach a very wide audience a more than 100 countries in one go if they become a series or they become a film for the ott format how much of a collaboration or how much of a exchange of ideas is possible or do you see it happening uh, because you are a celebrated author there are so many books that you have written and sacred games became the celebrated series how much of a collaboration do you see occurring further going ahead with the story well for me personally i wanted to stay out of the way of these guys as much as possible right so i mean as an outside voice reacting to the 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 what they sent me and talking to them and you know meeting with them um from time to time that was great fun and like you know the the excitement i think travels both ways i mean i what they were doing was incredible to watch and i guess because i've worked a little bit on the other side in film i know how annoying it can be when the writers of the novels try and cling too hard you know to their original vision it just doesn't work right and you have to make a radical leap right if you're translating from one language to another which is what really is what is happening here to translate poetry literally doesn't work right if in urdu i say jigar ka tukda in english it translates into a piece of my liver right so that makes absolutely <laughs> no sense right so it's the same way here you're going from one medium to another one medium is about words and the other one is about you know light and sudhir was saying this about light and sound and depth of field you can't cling to what you have and i think it depends <clears throat> on the writers right so so some writers want to work very closely and collaborate on the on the on the text that is being transferred to the screen um i didn't want to do that because i knew i'd lived with this inside my head for decades and i saw I, the vision that i tried to put on page was a, of a particular sort right so it has to be translated into another universe so i think the the book universe and the film universe exist at kind of angles to each other right um but they can't be like mirror reflections of each other um and and so i think you know some like i was saying some writers like to do that in this case i tried not to do that right um, to allow these guys to do what they did so wonderfully well um i don't know in the future i do think now that there's this possibility younger generations of writer writers are growing up with this idea that you know a book can be converted into a series i think in the form of the book will also start reflecting this and like so the, to me that's as a fiction writer that's a little scary right the idea of books being written with adaptation in mind is actually a distortion of what to me feels like the writing process itself and will actually take away from the richness that act, that filmmakers can actually use right the thematic wideness the the ambition and all of that uh because the reason that i mean one of the things that is is uh has kept me away from being more deeply involved in the film industry is that from day one you have to think about budgets right i mean i can write a huge scene like two regiments of cavalry you know so these thing of the 19th century reminded me you know horse regiments race towards each other on a plain right if i tell that to a filmmaker he has to think about like how many horses how many riders like craft services how many people are you going to have to feed who's going to clean up the horse shed right and so they're seeing money and i don't have to do that at all right i can just like you know in 40 pages i can create a battle sitting on this desk with this keyboard in front of me 
so so the, like right from the ground up right it's not just a question of like different artistic language it's also like different context um of production of how that how something gets made into art uh i don't know i mean like so we were saying 20 years from now who knows what will happen in the work that i do from my point of view i think the dream that has been around for ages of multimedia books interactive books i think that yeah. is becoming more and more reality i mean i have a software company and we are working right now on giving um writers the ability to create multimedia right which until now you had to have a you know you had to be a programmer essentially to do that kind of thing um so we are hoping that we can make that much much easier and then from the other side um uh, in terms of exchanges of idea the video game industry if i'm remembering correctly is right now four times the size of the film and the music industry put together right and it's growing at an incredible rate so so with the technological prowess that netflix has i think inevitably maybe not soon but in the next decade or two video games and film will come closer and closer right so interactive narrative storytelling in a visual form that's coming anyway i'm going on too much i'll stop, I'll stop no that i mean that's very true i mean i've just in fact just authored a big report which takes the pure and immersive storytelling in non linear formats of storytelling i mean you're very right that is a new normal and very benevolent of you as an author to say this i don't get to hear this from many authors i mean i also come from a family which is full of writers but not that it's it's, it's selfish on their part but it's also a new medium for a lot of authors and i think it it'll also take a little bit of time to create that understanding between those who are telling the stories for the screen and those who are actually uh, writing it as books but vikram uh the new normal is this now i mean we've not had a theatrical release in almost a year um more and more uh, uh, you know uh, films and web series and uh, stories are being told which are in in our palm which is also personalized viewing from the collective of the 35 mm to now this new uh, format of you know what is in my palm is very personal and i have the choice to view it how do you react to it as a filmmaker now that you are probably going to do season 3 of a series which the world has already watched the new normal is also that this is what is probably going to pave the way for new new storytelling now how do you see it happen hence forth well i'm not very happy about the palm part of it but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we should, i don't think i mean i know it's 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 the thing is look in india specifically right you most of your internet users have actually come through mobile it's not like the rest of the world where they came through broadband i think that 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 and we have to we have to accept that we have to accept the fact that the indian market at least is a very very mobile based market um look it's it it, it is it is the new normal and i think that that um we have to be you know we have to understand yes it is personal and people you know want to the breadth of what is being offered right now and the fact that people have a choice to be able to see what they want um i i'm 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 still personally a huge lover of the cinema i don't think that's going to go anywhere i think cinema is going to come back in a very very big way um because we all love the collective you know um watching experience and we will all go back to the theaters but yes the ott is going to flourish um in in uh, in a fairly major way i think we have to we have to i don't think storytelling in terms of um uh characters and stuff is going to change that much between a tv screen and a palm right it's more about okay visibility of certain things so it's it's more technical it's like okay maybe not that many long shots and more close ups but you never know with the way screens are going and the sharpness they have you can see things on this which you couldn't see on phones 5 years ago um so it's also possible that you know we can still carry on telling the same kind of stories because it's just you can see that much more um on these devices i think i've said this multiple times multiple interviews i think brad pitt said it really nice he came on for war machine uh which was a netflix original and he was on stage and somebody asked him something about it because it was his first netflix original and they were like you know you're doing something which is for the smallest screen how do you feel about it and the one question i remember he asked was uh, he asked the audience so he just said is that how many of the how many of the, your favorite movies how many of the classics have you actually seen on the big screen right so if you actually think about it those are movies that were made whether it's <clears throat> hitchcock films or kurosawa films or any of the great martin scorsese films how many how many scorsese films have we seen on a big screen how many bimal roy films have any of us seen on the big screen i mean it's the number is minuscule right but they're still great movies and we still know they're great movies 
um i do think it's just it's being if a great movie is a great movie a great series is a great series doesn't matter where you watch it um and i think the fact that we're making things available for people to watch you know at 4 a.m. at 9 a.m. in the bathroom on the bus on the train um i think is an amazing thing uh so i'm all for it i'm all for the cinema as well i want dying to go back and watch a whole bunch of movies uh you know but i'm i'm all for um the new format i'm all for being able to watch what i want when i want how i want fantastic uh, but uh, just the last thread from what mr chandra said immersive storytelling is also now gaining a lot of ground and the non linearity part of this immersive storytelling is also going to be a new norm how do you react to it and i would want also to be to briefly react i'm really in the last 10 minutes so i want to also start uh, i want to also ask monica something but the immersive part of it what is your reaction level as a filmmaker as somebody who is creating so much content for the ott uh, how do you see this happening well next logical step oh sorry so this is i mean yeah go on i mean i mean problem is because two filmmakers vikram and i are going to say more or less the same things <laughs> <laughs> because you know uh, yeah and and uh, you know i mean we all like to immerse people in, in so it's uh, storytelling has to be immersive necessarily and and i think it's it's uh, i think we are at the cusp of something incredible and i think i mean and of course all of us want to go back to say netflix but how netflix will collaborate with theaters tomorrow you don't know how how do you know that a film will not be released on simultaneously on netflix across theater and netflix is booming beaming it into theaters and everything's happening so i mean you don't know i mean this is just the beginning and it's fascinating what what's happening but you know i mean i think you should make films all of us for the future also because you you should compromise your te- technique and say i won't take a, just make it like you want because technology is fascinating and sound is fascinating because a young kid sees it on his laptop he's got this earphone here and he's seeing it right here he's sitting like that and watching films it's really immersive for him the way young people watch watch stuff watch netflix and it's quite amazing what what you can do and uh, it's fascinating what kind of stuff you can do today i mean it's, it's i mean i i'm i'm more and more indian books should go i'm helping anubhav sena uh, adapt one of the great books of all time you know a book called rag darbari right so i mean with, with which was not possible and uh, some time ago and and i'm also helping some young kids make short films and i'm also writing a big series and i would I'm also making a a film so i mean it's it's amazing the kind of opportunities and you have i mean I, it's because i mean and it, my whole recovery is possible because of otit it's because i was a secret a serious man came and netflix agreed to do it and for the first time i also netflix told me you know you got budget you got to increase it you know our sound budget <laughs> have to be a little more so the first time i confronted somebody who's telling me increase the budget right like, yes, so i mean that's how conscious they are of technology of the future right so i mean it's and that's immersive so i mean it sounds like this is vikram uh, yeah vikram would you want mr chandra to write a screenplay for a game probably which could be immersive is what i wanted to I was, ask i was I mean, just taking off my immersion yeah no just taking off from what mr chandra was saying i think i think uh, you know netflix has tried this in the past and uh, with uh, with kind of interactive you know content with with banda snatch where you get a choice um it's very very rudimentary and it's very binary right now but the idea of being able to merge and it sounds like a bit of a pipe dream but when i actually think about you know gaming um and the content you're watching and being and if you're in control of the narrative of what you're watching in, in a style and in a content and in a speed and you know in a in a level of energy i mean it sounds very really weird right now when you say it but i do think that that is a, you know that is somewhere that we might be able to see in the future where you are watching a certain film but you are driving the narrative um in a way you want forward and you're taking it to you know the, the, those nerve endings where you can sort of like you know go out somewhere and, and do those kind of things i think it's a wonderful it sounds scary when you think about it and it's like it's just like how is it ever going to happen but i'm sure just the way things have happened this will also happen and we'll be able to get there but um, i think it's quite exciting i think that interactivity um of uh, filmmaking is uh, the sound is amazing 
but i think augmented reality and ai is already there we are not waiting for the robots to walk in through the front door of our homes uh, really i mean if algorithms are uh, deciding which 25 people i need to in- i will be interacting with the with uh, with every day on my facebook page that itself is ruling manika immersive storytelling is the way forward i mean how do you respond to that as netflix the digital dreamscape already belongs to you i mean do you see immersive storytelling as the and the non linearity part uh, it's already non non linear every story that we are seeing on netflix is not exactly the beginning middle and the end format that we see or we have been used to seeing for several decades how do you respond to this new normal which is emerging and emerging very fast you know vani i was just going to say what vikram was saying that uh, uh, you know about uh, uh, bringing stories in real time etc i think creators and engineers uh, as we speak there are creators and engineers in fact who would be working across the world on merging the two you know on an everyday basis one gets uh, communication from uh, companies like unreal game engine etc what they are trying how do they want to collaborate with our stories so i think technology is a very very important part of how we are able to really bring stories to life and immersive is happening now also i feel it's not just an interactive space which will give us more immersive storytelling i think the stories that sudhir is making that mr chandra is writing or vikram is making they are such immersive stories that people will start something at probably 10 in the night and not leave it till they finish that story that's immersive and that's not uh you know that's not dependent on how much technology is used that's that's dependent on the heart of the story and yes technology really enables it enables the creators you know to really bring their vision to life and to really make you experience to make you feel more of what an author has written so i think for us at netflix uh it's really important to f- find the best stories first to really find the authors uh and and the stories we are very committed to that to find them first and then add the power of technology to it and uh you know the imagination of different creators who bring those stories to us that i th- i think the heart is never going to go away uh and the imagination from where a story begins and then technology will come and aid in that process and of course there will be real time storytelling game format all of those will come uh you know when they have to uh, you know we are already working on the next level of interactive storytelling but there will be stories in their purest form also which as humans as people who love stories will enjoy like you know whether it's in theaters it's on streaming so i think the the purity of storytelling will always always stay and and i think that is what we as netflix really want to invest in so keep the inquiry on monica you know mrs chandra i think we should have absolutely another session on immersive storytelling because that's also something that i'm very excited about but thank you all to the vikram uh, we are a land of katha vachak every nook and corner of this country stories in the digital dreamscape as we call it is evolving and evolving very fast um i wish i had one more hour to uh, you know uh, ask you so many more things but i think as we say uh, the argument should continue thank you jaipur literature festival and uh, let's keep the inquiry on uh, thank you all thank you friends thank you uh, mr chandra thank you vikram thank you sudhir and thank you monica uh, let's meet again soon maybe uh, physically at jlf next year thank you vikram chandra sudhir mishra vikram aditya motwane monica shegel and vani tripathi tikku for that wonderful session and creating and giving us a potential of what the digital landscape actually presents for us for the creative industries it's been a huge enormous blessing i think across the spectrum of lighting designers of designers of filmmakers of writers of young artists thank you so much to our session partner netflix and of course our celebration partners diashio thank you all for watching and being such a great audience remember stay locked on you can visit darbar hall or stay on here at the front lawn to visit the next round of sessions as you are aware the cultural sector and all of us have been hugely impacted so any kind of contribution from you would be enormously welcome so if you can please do press that contribute tag please remember to tweet and tag us using #jaipurlitcha festival 
2021, our handles are at Jaipur Lit Fest. Festival and all of us, and I hope you too, are protected by debt all. See you soon. Maybe you don't know what it's like to be the most powerful or the most wanted. Maybe you don't know how it feels to fall in love or love yourself or how it feels to lose your world, flip your world, or run the world. There's a lot you may not know, but that's exactly what makes a story worth watching. Because in the end, you're just a story away.